salmon of vanilla, just a salmon of knowledge, just a salmon of vanilla, just a salmon of knowledge, just a salmon of vanilla, just a salmon of knowledge podcast. Hey, salmon skins, welcome to another episode of Edwin Salmon of Knowledge. So, guys, um, I hope you're all doing okay. I'm not doing too bad. I'm gearing up for a, a couple of gigs, a couple of socially distant gigs. It's going to be six months since my last gig. So uh, I thought I'd try some material. And uh, I've got some new material. <laughs> uh, I usually strap it over my ears and wear it over my nose and mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm talking about masks, guys. <laughs> Uh, it's a boom time for old timey robbers. <laughs> they can just put a mask on and go in, and everyone thinks they're shielding themselves from the killer virus that's plaguing the world. But they can get them to empty out the register, <laughs> and then the, the guards come and they're like, "Could you describe the person? He was wearing a mask." And they go, <laughs> "Well, you just described two percent of the population." Because 100% of the population should be wearing masks, but they're not. And then the shopkeeper's like, look, you're being a bit preachy there, guard. What can you do about the robbery? And the guard's like, I'm sorry, I just can't help but pass comment because I am a middle class white man. So I've got opinions. I've got opinions. They're multiplying. And I'm losing control. Because I go on Twitter and comment on things. So, come here to me and I'll tell you some tales. See, I don't know I don't know what I'm going to do for this gig. I did the gig once, this um, Edwin Salmon of Knowledge tour that turned into a podcast that now is turning back into a stand-up show. I'm recording this podcast in advance because I'm going to my nephew's, not christening, that happened a long time ago. He's now 13 years of age. I'm going to my nephew's confirmation, where the priest comes up and says, yes, you are definitely a 13-year-old boy. Stay away from me. <laughs> Little uh, priest, pedophile joke there. I'd say Jerry would probably definitely not enjoy that. So, myself and Cara, my lovely wife-to-be, in other news that I didn't tell you about, we travelled to Offaly, to Burr County Offaly, where I'm from, so Cara could meet my parents for the first time in the homestead. I could show her all the embarrassing photos of me when I was a teenager, wearing uh, shell suit track suits, because, like, now I wear leisure wear, like everyone does, because it's comfortable. And because, you know, my job doesn't demand that I wear a suit or that I have a neat beard because my beard has become quite Zeus-like. Some some people have described it as Zeus-like online. You're turning into Zeus in lockdown, which I kind of would take over Santa Claus. They're both mythical creatures, although Zeus is kind of, you know, he's been known to get angry throw a fit and a bolt of lightning or two, whereas Santa Claus never really loses the rag. And you'd think he would, being under so much pressure to get all of those toys made for all of those good boys and girls around the world. But here's the thing. Santa Claus is the only mythical creature who could actually do his job in a pandemic. Because Santa... You know, he works alone. He has the reindeer, but he works alone. He works at night. Everyone's asleep in their beds, in their rooms. So he goes into an empty house. Now, I don't know what the story would be on leaving out cookies for Santa, leaving out carrots for Santa. You'd probably have to individually wrap each cookie like they do now in supermarkets, Um, which has led to an increase in pastry consumption uh, on my end, I have to say, because I like to go into Lidl and they have pastries there and they've got breads, but the pastries are all packaged in bags of three, 
you can't buy individual pastries. So I end up just getting three maple and pecan slices. And I'd have one for my breakfast. I'd have one for my elevenses, uh, which I take quite late, around half twelve, one o'clock. And then I'd usually have one at night. If I'm editing or if I'm gaming, just started watching uh, Twin Peaks last night. I would say for the first time, but I did watch it when it was on TV, but I only watched like a couple of episodes, including the finale of Twin Peaks, which gave me nightmares. I wouldn't say nightmares. It never left my uh, unconscious brain. When I saw it, it it took months and months for it to seep out of my brain because it was so weird and kind of um, kind of nightmarish and, you know, like otherworldly. And, you know, I I didn't want to say when we were watching the pilot episode, we watched an hour of the pilot episode before we started to fall asleep because I was like it was taking all of my willpower to not say to Kara, you're never going to guess in a million years where this is going to go. Anyway, how's everyone doing? Where are you from? <laughs> a geographical location that I might make merriment from such facts? <laughs> All right. Hey, we're having fun. Let's see, I'm still trying my stand-up. Anyone here have a dog? Huh? Yeah! Hmm? Yeah, you, sir? You got a dog? So, uh, do you describe yourself as a dog parent? <laughs> no, good. <laughs> Am I right, folks? Those people, they're the worst. Yeah. Yes. Yes, madam. Worse than serial killers. They are the worst. Because, you know, there's no comparison. You can't say having a child and having a dog is the same thing. Um, because, you know, dogs, we love dogs unconditionally. Whereas uh, babies grow up to become people that we hate. And... Yes, he knows what I'm talking about. He hates his son. Huh? Yeah, that's the face of a man who hates his son. Shut up! No, sir, please stay in your seat. <laughs> We're just having fun here. We're just, I'm just riven with you. I'm just riven with you. <laughs> but it's true. People love dogs so much. And I really dislike people who call themselves dog parents because you're not a parent. Um, well, I mean, if you look at the lifespan of a dog, you're a parent up until the early teens and then the dog dies and uh, that's it you get a new dog well you wait a year or something they say and you get a new dog now me and Kara we still don't have a dog because we don't have much space in the apartment for a dog and we don't want a big dog and she already has a big dog a Labrador called Moses Chocolate Lab you might have seen him on uh, Instagram and I would like a sm- you know, I'd like a reasonable sized dog. And when I say reasonable size, how would I qualify a reasonably sized dog? Any dog that you can put a miniature saddle on it and a one to two year old child can ride around like a horse. You know, the comparison I would make is Michael D. Higgins or diminutive in stature, but a giant in personality, president. He has dogs that he could conceivably put a saddle on and ride around the country wearing a cowboy hat and saying, uh, Cat Calor, hello everyone, and please come and pet my dog. I'm, this is a one dog town, and I'm a bounty hunter. What am I looking for? Culture. I'm looking for culture anywhere I can find it. And I am the president of Ireland. So, um, guys, we're going to take a short little break and we're going to be back with a very, very special guest. I'll see you then. And it's the break time. It's the time for the break. Here to come now. The break, 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 break. And the ads will come into your ears. Here's the break. I'll see you then. And we're back from the break. Guys, um, a couple of episodes again. Well, actually, a good few episodes ago. We have had uh, the pleasure of acting legend Sir Sean Connery appearing on this podcast. Now, Sean, in a move that he didn't do as the pandemic uh, came about, he has um, been on this uh, island, Connery Cove. He bought an island 
and he moved it out to international waters. And he had a fleet, a squadron of monkey butlers. The whole island was basically one giant golf course and a couple of bars. Now, the last time we spoke with Sir Sean, all hell had kind of broken loose on the island, Connery Cove. And when I say all hell, I mean all the monkeys. So I'm uh, going to get a catch up now with uh, Sir Sean. Uh, finally been able to track him down because he has been kind of floating somewhere beyond the reach of telephones or recording devices of any kind. But here he is now, uh, Sir Sean. Thank you so much for coming back on. Ed, it's great to be, great to be back on the show. Thanks for having me. So, uh, Sean, the last time we spoke, uh, the monkeys had taken over the island. Well, 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 you, that's oh. not exactly true. The monkeys uh, hadn't taken over. I mean, I was still the owner of the island. I was uh, in, you know, locked in my private office slash panic room. And uh, the monkeys were outside. I was perfectly safe. Uh, well, yeah, you were perfectly safe, Mr. Connery, uh, Sir Sean. But the people who were on Connery Cove were you know, in mortal danger from those monkeys. Oh, yes, they'll rip your arms right out of your shockage. Yeah, and that was that was the issue. Now, how how is the island these days? Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Yes, yes, I got rid of it. You see, uh, there were just too many, too many legal problems going on there. A couple of people survived. And uh, because they signed contracts... I couldn't have them hanging around contesting those contracts and coming at me in a court of law. Well, I mean, that's the uh, that's their right, I suppose. I mean, you, you you could say quite realistically, you could say that you you know you put them in danger. And what are you talking you, about danger? Well, I mean, I think you could say that. No way. I mean, yeah. Look, no way. Okay, you put them in. Okay, you put them in mild peril. What the fuck is mild peril? You know, like it's like the sort of thing you'd have in a PG-13 movie where it's mainly, you know, it's mainly okay, but then someone injects heroin into a baby or something, and it's a bit rough. What the fuck are you going on about? Look, it, uh, look it's just an example off the top of my head. I'm not very good at coming up with things off the to- top of my head, all right? I'm sorry. Yes, you should be sorry. You should fucking apologize. All right, let's keep the language down to a minimum, Mr. Sean. That's Mr. Sure Sean to you. Look, I'm sorry, okay? Yeah, you should be. You should be very sorry. Look, I, I, sh- I shouldn't have lost my, my temper there. I shouldn't mm-hmm. have. I don't, I don't mean to be accusing you of anything. Yes? I'm sure everything is, you do is above board and perfectly within the law of the sea. Yes, and the law of the sea is uh, complicated, which is just how I like it. So, so Sean, I thought I might just, um, you know, look, we can we can move away from from Connery Cove. Well, I have. Yeah, clearly. Um, I mean, like, but what what exactly happened? Well, there were a few people who were still there. There were, there were you know, a lot of the monkeys had uh, had, you know, they'd killed quite a number of the guests. And then all that was left was the other monkeys. And then, of course, uh, there has to be an alpha monkey. So uh, they just started on each other. Oh, it was a sight to behold. I wish I had a working camera, because I could have definitely recorded it and showed it to Netflix. You think Netflix would have um, would be interested in a show where monkeys, you know, rip each other apart? Yeah, you could have called it uh, Land of the Angry Monkeys. That's a terrible title. Well, I'm just coming up with it off the top of my head. I'm not too good at coming up with things off the top of my head either, you know. Usually I have a script. Yeah, I don't think um, King of the Monkeys or Monkey Monkey Island Fever, maybe that would be better. Yes, yeah. Oh, I like Monkey Island Fever. That's a great one. I'm writing that one down. Monkey Island Fever. So, um... Where is the island right now? Oh, fuck knows. Well, do you know? Look, Ed, I was completely prepared for this eventuality. When you have uh, a staff mainly uh, of chimpanzees and other monkeys, you expect them to, uh, you know, be a little bit violent. 
and I always had the option of going to my massive cruise liner, which was more on the southernmost tip of the island. A massive cruise liner? Yes, yes. Uh, Sean's ship. Sean's ship. Sean's ship. That's what I named it. Um, you know, I I was asked what I wanted to call it, and of course I'm no good at coming up with things off the top of my head, so I just said Sean's ship. I mean, it seems pretty obvious, really. I'm the only one that's going to be on the ship. Yeah, okay. So what, so what you left on the ship, and you just left them all there on the island? No, no, uh, I also have a giant drill right in the center of the island. I got the idea from that uh, movie Armageddon. Oh, really? Yes, and I said, uh, all right, read the small print. There was small print in, on the contract. Oh, yes, they, sh- they waved away of a lot of their rights. Uh, their right to live on the island. And also in the small print, it said, in the eventuality of uh, the, you know, I didn't say the highly likely eventuality of the chimpanzees becoming quite aggressive and ripping your arms and your heads off, I will activate the massive drill. It will drill a hole in the center of Connery Cove and the entire island will sink to the bottom of the ocean. Fucking hell. Yes, I know. And that's what I did. So the island is now a sunken island. Yes, it sunk right to the bottom of the ocean. Which ocean? I have no idea. You've no idea? I did no idea where we were at the time. It was quite blue, I have to say. It was beautiful to see it go down. And how did it sound? Oh, the sound is indescribable. Could you describe it? I'll do my best. It was, uh, well, if you can imagine the sound of uh, chimpanzees and humans screaming, and then that sound slowly going away and sinking to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, it sounds uh, like something that would haunt my dreams. Oh no, I've have, I've never dreamt about it since. I haven't really given it a second thought. I'm only thinking about it now because you asked me. So the island is sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Yes, uh, I mean, I think I'm doing a great service to mankind. How? Well, I mean, if you think about it, and I have thought about it quite a lot. If you think about it, I'm doing a service to the archaeologists of the future. To the archaeologists of the future? Um, how exactly? Well, it's uh, it's very simple. In, you know, I don't know, 100 years, 200 years, however long civilization lasts. Archaeologists or space archaeologists? Space archaeologists? Well, astronauts who study archaeology? No, no, no. I'm talking about... Uh, alien life forms. Alien life forms. Yes, alien life forms. They'll come down. Some of them will be gardeners. Some of them will play banjo. Some of them will be archaeologists. You know, they'll all have different jobs. Banjo playing space archaeologist. No, no. The professional banjo players who are aliens. Now, I'm not saying that uh, an archaeologist could play a banjo in his spare time as a, as a hobby. But uh, that won't be his full-time gig. He'll be uh, an archaeologist. And how is this going to be good for them? Well, they'll want to uncover a lot of stuff. And, you know, a lot of the the old buildings and the old civilizations has already been discovered by the human archaeologists. So they'll take to the ocean. Oh, yeah, probably. I mean, kind of makes sense. It absolutely makes a lot of sense. Because, uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, 95% of the planet's surface is water. I don't think it's that high, Sir Sean. No, no, I'm pretty sure it's 95%. You know, if you look out, especially if you live by the sea, as I do, or live on an island, as I used to, um, well, now I live on a boat. So uh, when I walk around my boat to get my steps up in the morning... To get your steps up, or you've got a Fitbit? Yes, yes, I mean, just on everyone. It tells me when I need to get my steps up. My beautiful French wife, uh, she got me one for my birthday. Oh, really, yeah? Yeah, yeah, just to keep me active. So I walk around, I'm going, all right. I think goes off and it says, you're being a lazy cunt, Sean. Please, <laughs> the language is a bit much. All right, sorry. You're being a lazy bastard, Sean. You need to get up and get 250 steps in before the hour. Or else your wife is going to beat you in the race. And you don't, wanna, you don't want your wife to beat you? No, no, no. I want to beat my wife. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, so we're very fit, and uh, when I walk around the boat, all I can see is water. 
And uh, when I was on the island, all I can see is water. So, you know, that's uh, 95% of what I'm seeing is water. So I just assume the planet is covered by 95% of water. Are you okay, Mrs. Sean? Yeah, sorry, just my... My... Uh, my teeth were slipping. Okay. So 95% of the planet is water. The alien archaeologists are going to go, we got to search this. This is uh, potentially a gold mine for us alien archaeologists. So they'll go down, they'll swim to the bottom of the ocean. Lo and behold, they'll find Connery Cove. And a lot of the monkeys and a lot of the people, you know, the ones that stayed indoors are in the caves to try and hide from the monkeys. They'll, they'll be there. Their bones will be there. And uh, they'll come to the conclusion that once upon a time, thousands and thousands of years ago, on the planet Earth, monkeys and man lived side by side. Side by side? Side by side. And uh, eventually the monkeys rose up and killed all the humans. So you're proposing that you're, what you're doing by, if I can get this right now, what you're doing is you're sinking Connery Cove in order to bring about a Planet of the Apes type scenario whereby aliens who are archaeologists, some of them play banjo part time, will find it and go, well, there was a there was definitely a master slave relationship going on here with the uh, the monkeys and the humans. Is that what you're trying to say? That's exactly right. You know, sometimes in these conversations, I don't think you understand me. But I think today we see eye to eye. Yeah, I think we do. So, Sean, you are sailing the seven seas. The seven seas? Yeah, you know, the 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 ocean. Oh, I thought it was just one big ocean. I just call, I thought it was called the big blue. No, there's, there's many different seas. And you're sailing them. And uh, every, everything's fine with you, I'm, I'm assuming. Yes, yes. I mean, look, I've, I've, I'm cocooning here on my ship. Um, I've got my eye out. I've got my high-powered binoculars and telescopes. And I'm looking for a potential new island to buy. You're looking for a new island to buy. Or a peninsula, anything that I can put a... You know, if I bought a peninsula, I could put, put a big gate or a big wall at the one end of it. And uh, that would stop the riffraff from getting in. And you don't want riffraff... No, no, no. Fucking can't stand the riffraff. Uh, Sean, um, look, I want you to be safe. You mean that, Dad? Yeah, I, I honestly do mean that. And I want your good lady wife to be safe from you uh, beating her in the Fitbit. In the Fitbit uh, challenge. Um, I'm currently embroiled in a Fitbit contest with uh, myself and my wife. Do you, do you beat her? No, she beats me quite regularly at that so um, stay safe and please uh, when you're back in range to contact me can you contact me and can we t- maybe talk about you know the movies that you've made I'd love to do that ah, sure sure I haven't talked about that in a while I, I mean I don't know what I could remember but uh, yes um, look I'm willing to have an open and frank conversation with you Ed well thank you Sir Sean um, you know I'm very I'm very pleased that you chose to reach out specifically to my podcast um take care of yourself and uh you know enjoy yourself on not too much (laughs) oh don't worry i'm not much of a party boy anymore i take things very seriously Mm, do you yes yes i do all right ed take care talk to you later Thanks very much. I'm just going to, uh, just in the middle of having a karaoke session. Really? You're into karaoke? Oh, yeah. I mean, look, when you're on a boat in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the ocean, the big blue, you can shing to your heart's content and no one can, no one can bat an eyelid or tell you to shut the fuck up. I suppose that's true. Well, um, thank you, Sean. Enjoy your karaoke and uh, be safe. Thanks again for coming on my podcast. All right. Take care. All right. Hit it. Her name is Rio, and she dances on the sand. Just like You're that river under. twisting through a dusty land. And when she shines, she really okay. shows you all she can. Oh, Rio, Rio, dance across the Rio Grande. Well, I'm just trying to... 
Hi, diddly dee, a captain's life for me. I love to boat on the waves. I love to have a lovely rave. Oh, Hi, sorry, diddly I, and there. until I, I die. A life on the ocean waves is what I desire. A life on the ocean waves. I'll build a little fire, but I won't do it on the boat because I'll burn a hole in it. And then I'll sink to the bottom of the ocean. An alien okay. archaeologist will think that I was ruled by a monkeys. Hi, diddly dee, a boat and life for me. Ah, there he goes. So, uh, thank you, Sir Sean Connery, for appearing again on the podcast. Hopefully, we'll have him on soon once he gets back in range of wherever he is. So, if you hear um, what sounds like Sean Connery belting out at top volume some 80s classics, and you think, is that Sean Connery singing some 80s classics on a boat? Uh, It is. It is him. So, keep an ear out for that. And if you do hear the distant sound of Sean Connery giving it socks on the karaoke machine, please note the location and uh, give me uh, uh, send me a direct tweet and let me know where you are and where you heard it. And maybe we can try and triangulate the signal like they used to do in old Star Trek The Next Generation episodes. Guys, that is it for this week. Thank you so much for listening. Be safe. Be sound. Be kind to each other. Uh, Stay healthy. Stay away from people who look sick. Uh, It's basic advice, but it's good advice. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-